YouTube. It's your boy JP's on the keys in this too. Easy, we're wrapping right the video. World War One, 1915. We already did, we did 1914 yesterday. Y'all loved it. Let's get to it. The beautiful opera, the beautiful orchestra music just vroom, bringing everything in. I like it. January 1915. World War I is just five months old, and already around one million soldiers have fallen. A war that began in the Balkans has engulfed much of the world. The Central Powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, fight the Allies. Britain, France, Russia, Serbia and Montenegro, Belgium, and Japan. In Poland and the Baltic, the Russian army has suffered a string of massive defeats, but continues to battle German and Austro-Hungarian forces. Austro-Hungarian troops have also suffered huge losses and are humiliated by their failure to defeat Serbia. In the Caucasus Mountains, Russian and Ottoman forces fight each other in freezing winter. Wait, 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 what? Who? Wait, what? The Caucasus Mountains, their failure to defeat Serbia also suffered huge losses and are humiliated by their failure to defeat Serbia. Austria-Hungary didn't defeat what? Bro, look. Okay, yeah, that that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. You look at the you look at the size of Serbia compared to Austria-Hungary. That's like you can fit like maybe like ten of the, like seven or eight of those in the, the land space. Wow. So wow. Okay. <laughs> In the Caucasus Mountains, Russian and Ottoman forces fight each other in freezing winter conditions. While on the Western Front, French, British and Belgian troops are dug in facing the Germans, in trenches stretching from the English Channel to Switzerland. As part of the world's first strategic bombing campaign, Germany sends two giant airships known as Zeppelins to bomb Britain. They hit the ports of Kings Lynn and Great Yarmouth, damaging houses and killing four civilians. At sea, at the Battle of Dogger Bank, the British Navy sinks one German cruiser, but the rest of the German squadron escapes. Command of the seas has allowed Britain to impose a naval blockade of Germany, preventing vital supplies, including food, from reaching the country by sea. Germany now retaliates with its own blockade. It declares the waters around the British Isles to be a war zone, where its U-boats will attack Allied merchant ships without warning. Britain relies on imported food to feed its population. Germany plans to starve her into surrender. On the eastern, like just the just just the war, like the strategy again. Like you you basically you don't you don't even just try to kill all the soldiers. You you try to destroy like the infrastructure of the country. Like they you see how they're going for they're they're taking away food. They're destroying factories so you can't produce weapons or any type of like battle battle vehicles or tanks. They're taking away all your your supplies, your communication, your food. It's like you're cutting off every little thing. You're not just, oh, we, we killed all the soldiers. We, we might we might have lost more soldiers, but we've starved out their entire country. So we basically won in the end. Like, just just, just, just to think about that is just, is, is like, it's, in, it's very interesting. In front, German Field Marshal von Hindenburg launches a winter offensive and inflicts another massive defeat on the Russian army at the Second Battle of Masurian Lakes. The Russians lose up to 200,000 men, half of them surrendering amid freezing winter conditions. The Russians have more success against Austria-Hungary. The city of Shemishul falls after a four-month siege, netting the Russians 100,000 prisoners. Austria-Hungary's total losses now reach two million. 
Meanwhile, the British and French send warships to the Dardanelles to threaten Constantinople, capital of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. They believe a show of force will quickly cause Turkey to surrender. They bombard Turkish shore forts in the narrow straits. But three battleships are sunk by mines and three more damaged. The attack is called off. On the Western Front, the British attack at Neuve Chapelle. But the advance is soon halted by German barbed wire and machine guns. British and Indian units suffer 11,000 casualties, about a quarter of the attacking force. Six weeks later, at the Second Battle of Ypres, the Germans attack with poison gas for the first time on the Western Front. A cloud. They just rolling out all the stops. Jeez, you, you got the, you got first, you got trench warfare. Now we got poison gas. Like they, they just bringing out all the weapons, you know. But hey, this is, you know, what I'm saying this is a world war, so this is definitely a good live testing ground. Even though I'm sure they've tested it before, like in their private little areas. But I'm saying this is the first, their first like live use in battle. So definitely they were excited to use these techniques. A load of lethal chlorine forces Allied troops to abandon their trenches. But the Germans don't have enough reserves ready to exploit the advantage. Soldiers on both sides are quickly supplied with crude gas masks as a chemical weapons arms race begins. The Allies land ground troops at Gallipoli, including men of the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps the Anzacs. Their goal is to take out the shore forts that are preventing Allied warships reaching Constantinople. But they immediately meet fierce Turkish resistance and are pinned down close to the shore. The day before the landings, the Ottoman Empire begins the systematic deportation and murder of ethnic Armenians living within its borders. The Armenians are a long persecuted ethnic and religious minority, suspected of supporting Turkey's enemies. Tens of thousands of men, women and children are transported to the Syrian desert and left to die. In all, more than a million Armenians perish. So this is basically like their little, it's like their little version of the, uh, the Holocaust kind of, not really. You know, I think this is more related to, if you don't know, like the Trail of Tears, where um, the, the, the Indians were forced, Native Americans were forced to trial to like walk from, I think from the east all the way back to the near Oklahoma. And they were basically like, no, they most of them died of starvation, died of, of, of thirst, just died of exhaustion. So basically, this is, this is kind of like similar to the Trail of Tears in a way, like how they, 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 laid, they put them in the desert or they put them in an environment that they were definitely not fit to be in and he just left them with no resources. Like just, like just a disregard for human life, just like out of fear, <clears throat> like out of fear is ridiculous. Like just like how the US, like when, when Pearl, ever since Pearl Harbor happened, they just started, they just started putting, they started putting Japanese Americans into concentration camps. That are in what do you call them? Internment camps, whatever you call them. These are Americans. They just they just happen to be of Japanese descent. Now, because of your fear, you you do that. You you, you put up the concentration camps, just like now, just like now with this whole epidemic thing, no pandemic. Everybody who's who's who seen who looks Asian is getting persecuted because now it's like oh. You're, it's because of your people that that, that is just like how it is and all this and they're getting persecuted for no reason because they they didn't have no they had no idea that that was the you know what I'm saying like this is just persecution out of fear the allies condemn the events as a crime against humanity and civilization and promise to hold the perpetrators criminally responsible to this day the Turkish government disputes the death toll and that these events constituted a genocide.
On the Eastern Front, a joint German-Austro-Hungarian offensive in Galicia breaks through Russian defences, recapturing Chemischl and taking 100,000 prisoners. It is the beginning of a steady advance against Russian forces. At sea, the British passenger liner Lusitania, sailing from New York to Liverpool, is torpedoed by a German U-boat off the coast of Ireland without warning. 1,198 passengers and crew perish, including 128 Americans. US President Woodrow Wilson and the American public are outraged. But Germany insists the liner was a fair target as the British used her to carry military supplies. In May, the Allies launched the Second Battle of Artois in another effort to break through the German lines. The French make the main attack at Vimy Ridge, while the British launch supporting attacks at Aubert Ridge and Festubert. The Allies sustain 130,000 casualties and advance just a few thousand yards. That summer, above the Western Front, so, so I think I remember the, 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 the bombing of the Lusitania did not directly make America join the war. I think it was something about like the Germany was going to send some type of bomb in America and, the, and the, I think a British, I think some type of British spies intercepted it and they told America that Germany was planning some huge attack in America and then that's why America joined the war because the Lusitania definitely definitely pushed a lot of people to the breaking point but that wasn't you know the straw that broke the camel's back <laughs> front the Fokker Eindecker helps Germany win control of the air it's one of the first aircraft with a machine gun able to fire forward through its propeller thanks to a new invention known as interrupter gear allied aircraft losses mount rapidly in what becomes known as the Fokker scourge Italy, swayed by British and French promises of territorial gains at Austria-Hungary's expense, joins the Allies, declaring war on Austria-Hungary and later the Ottoman Empire and Germany. The Italian army makes its first assault against Austro-Hungarian positions along the Isonzo River, but is repulsed with heavy losses. Meanwhile, the Allies face a crisis on the Eastern Front. The Russians have begun a general retreat, abandoning Poland. German troops enter Warsaw on the 5th of August. Tsar Nicholas II dismisses the Russian army's commander-in-chief, Grand Duke Nicholas, and takes personal command. It will prove disastrous for the Tsar, as he becomes more and more closely tied to Russian military defeat. At Gallipoli, the Allies land reinforcements at Suvla Bay, but neither they nor a series of fresh attacks by the Anzacs can break the deadlock. Conditions for both sides are terrible. Troops are tormented not only by the enemy, but by heat, flies and sickness. In the Atlantic, a German U-boat sinks the liner SS Arabic. 44 are lost including three Americans. In response to further US warnings, Germany ends all attacks on passenger ships. See, I, see I, I, didn't, I, didn't know they sunk, I didn't know that they sunk a second boat with Americans on it. I, I've only heard about the Lusitania so far, so definitely, so like basically the United States bully Germany into not even, hey, you know what I'm saying, ain't no more, no more pasture ships, because y'all y'all keep bombing these ships. It's got innocent people on them, and you're killing a whole bunch of innocent people. You know what I mean? We can, you, can't, you can't keep doing that. You can't. That's a that's a no no. On the Western Front, the Allies mount their biggest offensive of the war so far, designed to smash through the front and take pressure off their beleaguered Russian ally. The French attack in the Third Battle of Artois 
and Second Battle of Champagne. The British, with the help of poison gas, attack at loss. Despite initial gains, the attacks soon get bogged down, with enormous losses on all sides. Allied troops land at Salonika in Greece to open a new front against the Central Powers and bring aid to Serbia. But the Allies are too late. Bulgaria joins the Central Powers and their joint offensive overruns Serbia in two months. That winter, the remnants of the Serbian army escape through the Albanian mountains. Their losses are horrific. By the end of the war, a third of Serbia's army has been killed, the highest proportion of any nation. Fierce fighting continues on the Italian front, as Italian troops launch the third and fourth battle. Wait, I, I know this is like not, this doesn't really matter in the long, in the scheme of things, but I just like the attention to detail in this video with like the flags and like the, the little explosion sign. I like the attention to detail. Like whoever edited, the, whoever did the editing on this video definitely took their time. You know, I, I can definitely appreciate that. Battles of the Isonso. Austro-Hungarian forces, though outnumbered, are dug in on the high ground and impossible to dislodge. In the Middle East, a British advance on Baghdad is blocked by Turkish forces at the Battle of Tessifon, 25 miles south of the city. The British withdraw to Kut, where they are besieged. The Allies abandon the Gallipoli campaign. 83,000 troops are secretly evacuated without alerting Turkish forces. Not a man is lost. It's one of the best executed plans of the war. The campaign has cost both sides a quarter of a million casualties. 1915 is a bad year for the Allies. Enormous losses for no tangible gains. But there is no talk of peace. Instead, all sides prepare for even bigger offensives in 1916 with new tactics developed from earlier failures. All sides still believe a decisive battlefield victory is within grasp. Epic History TV relies on the support of viewers like you. <clears throat> that, wow, you know what I'm saying? So, definitely a lot of, a lot of casualties, you know what I'm saying? It was a lot of wars, but the thing is, every time, a, it's every time a battle was fought, it was tens of thousands of casualties in these wars. And what I'm noticing, it's a lot of sea, a lot, a lot of naval battle. You know, I noticed a lot of naval battle. Like, definitely, they finally, of course, this isn't the first time that, that like, oh, that like ships have been used in war, but this is probably the, I think this is the first, this is the first war that they're being utilized as much as they are. Because, like, a lot of these battles were happening at sea. And that's a very, you know what I'm saying? That's a, like a level of combat that is like not really, that is like, it's a very it's a different, it's a very different level of combat. It's probably the thing where like, then, then once people get to like air combat and like fighter jets and like, the, like the, things like that, then that's where it gets like interesting. Not like in a fun way, but just in a, in a way that you want to learn about it. You know what I mean? But anyway, thanks again for watching. Definitely will keep, def, I will definitely keep continuing this series. But anyway, I appreciate everybody for, for coming. Um, leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new to the channel. Don't forget to share the video wherever you share videos at. Also, don't forget to turn on my post notifications so that you do not miss an upload. But anyway, thank you. Please be safe. Have a great day. Stay on the grind. I'm out. Peace.